Hello children and welcome to what is likely our last um, online learning lesson. Today we are going to go right back in time, thousands of years, um, three, over 3,000 years uh, to the Shang Dynasty of ancient China. Now I, want you, I wanted you to have a look at some amazing artifacts that historians and archaeologists have found from this time period. They are some of the most beautiful objects that have been made out of bronze throughout the whole of the Earth's history. So have a look at these objects. They're all made out of bronze. Uh, and I want you to see what you can see in the patterns and what sort of shapes you can see and whether you can see anything hiding in the patterns. So here is one of them. What do you think it was used for? What can you see in the patterns? Can you see any shapes? Any images? What do you think of the condition of it? Does it look brand new or does it look aged? And how do you know? Let's have a look at another one. Here's another one. I imagine this one was probably used to do something different with. Can you see any patterns in this one, or shapes? If you want to pause the video at any point, please do. Here's another one, similar to the first one. This one you can really see the rust coming out of, uh, coming out of it. It really shows you that it's aged, and it would do after 3,000 years. This one's a very different <clears throat> this one's a very different shape. Still bronze. Can you see any patterns in this one? There's definitely something lurking and hiding in this one. And finally have a look at this. This one has quite an obvious shape going on around here. Can you tell what this is? And look at this amazing lid up here. What is that? So children, we're moving on to learn about the Shang Dynasty of ancient China. A dynasty is another name for a family uh, that has been in power for a long period of time. Can you think of another dynasty that you have learned about? So when learning about the Egyptians, you would have learned about the Egyptian dynasties. Great families who were in power for a long, long period of time. And once one of them died, then their, ch their child would come into power and there would be the new pharaoh and so on. And that would go on for years and generations. But this is on the other side of the world in China, and it was the Shang dynasty. Now we're going to learn about the Shang Dynasty a lot more when, we, when it comes to topic lessons, but at the moment we are going to explore it a bit through its artwork. But just to put the Shang Dynasty in context, it was around the same time as Tutankhamun was in power in Egypt, and it was also around the same time as the Trojan War, which you learnt about with Rachel last year. And it was all also around the same time as the first Celtic tribes uh, living in Britain. So loads of things were happening all around the same time. We don't really think about them all connecting with each other, but all of these things were different things were happening at the same time around the world. Now, one of the reasons the Shang Dynasty was so important and uh, famous and well known is because of these Shang Dynasty bronzes, these amazing objects, artifacts that were created by them, uh, that were decorated so beautifully and were so well preserved as well. And one of the reasons they were so well preserved, well, actually, I wonder, have a think, have a pause of the video and think about why uh, these bronzes, these beautiful objects, were kept in such good condition over 3,000 years. How do you think that happened? Pause the video and have a think about that. Off you go. Well, 
These objects aren't just special now. They were super special to these people back in ancient China. And they wouldn't have been cheap to make. In fact, to get bronze, you would have had to either pay a lot of money or you would have had to work very hard in order to make it yourself. But there was not a lot of it around. And then even if you could get this bronze, you would still have to um, melt it down using a really hot oven that you'd probably have to uh, build out of uh, clay and build it into the ground. Um, you'd have to melt it all down and then you'd have to very skillfully pour it into a mould in order to make the shape of these bronzes. So it would have taken a lot of money, it would have taken a lot of time, and it would have taken a lot of expertise as well. So not just anyone would have had these um, these Shang Dynasty bronzes, it would have been really important people or people with a lot of power or people with, with a lot of money. And can you remember how uh, people in the Iron Age were buried with lots of their things? In fact, do you remember the Amesbury archer who was a Bronze Age archer, a beaker person? Do you remember what he was buried with? He was buried with bits of gold and he was buried with all of his equipment because they believed that actually that he would need it in the afterlife. So he took all of his important belongings with him when he was buried. And exactly the same belief uh, happened on the other side of the world in China. So people believed that uh, once you had died, you could take your things with you if you were buried with them. And so these amazing bronze... Um, uh, sculptures, bronze artifacts, were buried with the, these people, meaning that they were kept safe in their graves. And that's how they survived 3,000 years. Now, children, that was a lot of information. So if you want to pause the video and rewind it now, go right ahead. So why do the, they have these bronzes? Pause the video and have a think. Why do you think they would have wanted these bronzes? Why, the, why would they have been uh, so special? Why would people have paid so much money to have them? Pause the video and have a think about that. Off you go. Well, these were really nice artifacts. People would have wanted them to show how important they were. They would have wanted them uh, to show how much money they had. To show that I can afford a, a, a one of these bronzes. And they were also quite spiritual people, so they would have taken part in um, spiritual ceremonies, honouring uh, their ancestors, so people in their family who had died. So they would have had them to show how much power or money they had, but they also would have had them for a very practical reason, uh, to take part in ceremonies, maybe they would have drunk from them, maybe they would have used them to um, pour over people's graves, and so on. Now what's really interesting, and something that historians can't really work out, is what's uh, printed on them, well not printed on them, but um, uh, cast into them, the designs on the front of them, uh, the patterns and the beautiful pictures on them. And they can't quite work out why these people made these decisions. Uh, so I'm going to show you the pictures again and I want to see what you think uh, are on these bronzes. Let's have a look at this one here. What sort of shapes or patterns can you see? Do all of the patterns make a complete picture? What is it a picture of? Well, this thing here and this thing here are two uh, of a set. Can you tell what they are? So lots of historians and yourselves included might think that they are a pair of eyes. And these here, lots of people believe that they are a pair of horns. And if you look closer at all of this, starting to make sense of it, it starts to become a picture of an animal. What animal specifically? I'm not really sure. But you can sort of start to see an animal in there. And if we look at this one again, we can see the eyes there, and we can see the horns there. 
and we can see maybe what is a mouth, or maybe even a pair of curly tusks around the sides there. And in exactly the same way on this one, we can see a pair of eyes, the horns, a nose, and maybe some other bits as well. But my favorite, my favorite one of all of these is this one here. I can see those eyes, and then I think the rest of it is a long snake-like dragon that goes all the way around the edge like that. I think that's such an impressive design. So as I was saying before, people don't really know the significance of these animals, why these animals were put on these, um, on these artifacts. In my mind, in fact, no, uh, I'm going to ask you, why do you think um, these people put animals onto their bronzes, onto their incredibly precious, beautifully made artefacts? Because there is no answer. So your guess is as good as anyone's. As a historian, what do you think? Pause the video and have a think about it. Off you go. So in my mind, it would be just the same reason that you or I might put an animal on an object just because, well, we like them and they look good. And it's a lovely thing to decorate something with. So today I would like to have a go at creating our own uh, designs for a uh, Shang Dynasty bronze. Let's have a go. So here I am with a pencil, a piece of paper, uh, and I've started drawing the outline of a bronze. So I've done the sort of bowl first, and yours doesn't have to be a bowl. Yours can be a vase, or it can be or it can be a plate as well, uh, or something else that you decide. And I think I'm going to go for three um, three feet on it because that's what I've seen most of them have. Uh, so I'm going to do one foot there, and one foot sort of behind it there and one foot here as well. There we go. Right, now I'm going to put in some basic decorations and shapes on it. So around the top I'm going to do a lip like that and I might do another one like that. And then I'm going to do those all important eyes. Those are the things I'm going to start with and they're going to be nice and big. Because on every single one that we saw, they had the eyes. And then I'm going to draw the horns. And the horns almost had corners to them, didn't they? So it's going to look like that, and I'm going to see if I can do exactly the same thing on the other side. This is the difficulty of it, getting it to be symmetrical, because we want it to be the same on each side. And that's close enough, lovely. Right, next step, I'm going to do a nose for it. The nose is going to look like that. In fact, it's going to go all the way up like that. And then I'm going to do some tusks. And it's going to follow that kind of almost uh, a pattern with corners, or a sort of style with corners. Lovely, I'm really enjoying this. Okay, so the next step is to fill in the rest of it with patterns. And we saw a lot of these kind of swirly patterns here. And other patterns just to fill in the space. So it's really your chance to get creative here. So what you could do is start drawing strips like this and then doing some swells in them. Uh, 
and so on. And you could do another, oh, I don't know if you could see that. Sorry, I think I dro uh, drooped the camera a bit. Do another one over here that connects to this tusk. And I'll start doing the little swirlies over here, just like that. Lovely. And then around these bits, I'm going to do some swirlies as well. Um, maybe up here. Almost like square, squ square swirls. Try saying that ten times. Square, square swirls, square swirls. So what I've continued to do is add in other lines as well to fill out that shape. And I'm going to continue this because I don't want to see much empty space. It's fine for a little bit, but I don't want to see a huge amount of it. And we're going to end there, children. Now, if you wanted to take your piece of work to the next stage, what you could then do is have start having a look at the colours. Because it's been rusted and it's bronze, you can start to see greens and yellows and browns and even a bit of sort of reddy um, orange there as well. So you could colour in yours like that. And once you finish that, you could even go over it in a black pen, going over each one of your lines to make them really stand out. I'm going to leave that decision to you, children. It's up to you how far you go with this. So today we've been learning about the Shang Dynasty, which is around the same time as Tutankhamun in Egypt and around the same time as the uh, Celtic tribes in the UK, or oh, in Britain, uh, as it was. Um, we learnt that these people um, created these amazing bronzes, bronze statues, bronze sculptures that they would take with them to the afterlife. They would use them to honour their dead family or their ancestors who had died before. We don't really know why, but lots of them seem to have animals printed on them. We've all come up with some good ideas as to why that might be. What we're doing today is we're recreating uh, one of these bronzes for our own. It's up to you ha uh, which shape that you which shape you choose, but I'm really excited to see them. So please send them over once they're done. Good luck with us, children, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye bye.